Hello, welcome back. Uh, thanks for joining me. So I made it. I made some posts on TikTok finally. So this was something I've been trying to get to. I thought it would take a little less time, but you know, this is uh, things just take what they take. I had issues, had to work them out. Eventually, I resolved enough issues with either workarounds or solutions to make that first post. And so uh, I'm going to link below here where you can go to see my first few posts. And I want to encourage you all, uh, if you're watching this, to, you know, uh, follow me on TikTok and maybe forward some of these posts to your friends or even your strangers, anybody. It doesn't matter. Give me some likes and some forwards and some follows and help me get some energy going around my account. But today on the channel here, I'm going to show you some of the some of the things that I ended up working through in Unreal Engine in order to marry up the face and uh, the body motions. So I'll show you something I recorded uh, back when I was working through these issues. You can see I've got my face moving. Maybe I'll move this in front of that so that I get a better registration. Just move my camera in front of my screen so that it can check out my head while I'm doing it. So, I've got this pose asset. Uh, I've got the jaw and the eyes controlled by joints through the pose asset. It's not great. I really tried for a while to get the jaw working better, but you can see that it lags, um, I'm sure, if I open my jaw a few times. So it looks kind of okay as I'm talking here, but I'm not really that happy with it because if I do a good jaw motion, yeah, yeah, you can see it's kind of it looks a little anatomically not that cool. Um, but I did get the eyes looking down better, I think. Hey, I'm gonna jump in here and point out that jaw thing that I just showed. Uh, actually, I know what that is. I found, while looking for something else, I found this web page uh, here that shows this additive versus full body settings. Uh, which was the which was the source of my issue? Uh, I'll, I'll uh, show you that here. So a pose asset, if you don't know, is an asset that lets you store some poses as keyframes. My pose asset actually comes from here, and I have a few versions of this because I kept adding new poses into my pose asset. But it's basically the um, at each one of these, at each one of these frames, yeah, uh, I have a piece of animation, a, a pose at each of these uh, frames, some eye poses, and some ear wiggles, and that's about it. And then here in the content browser, you take one of these, you right click, and you can create a pose asset out of this here, create pose asset, uh, and then you get one of these, which lets you name each pose, each individual pose that's listed there. You can give it a name, and if that name matches one of these uh, curves that's coming through, for example, from the AR kit in my case, like jaw open, it will move that uh, the, the bones into that pose, basically. So here you can see the, the morph target and the bones going together in the right way. Now my problem was that over here I wasn't using the additive mode. I was using the default, which is not additive. And that's what was causing the lag. And it was causing some other issues in my sequencer that were very confounding until I discovered this page purely by chance. So I'm going to go back to the previously recorded video and show you some of the other things that I'm stumbling through. Look down, look left, right, up. So that all seems to be going better. Blinks look nice. I um, I touched up the color of the eyeshadow. Uh, I also added a little um, blend shape to curl this in the neck because I saw in some poses I was getting penetration. I thought that would be just an easy way to get rid of that. I figured out how to um, apply my correctives. So I have a corrective called half eye close that I created that pulls, as the eye closes, it pulls 
the uh, as the eye closes it pulls the lids out a little bit and so I found some magic numbers here that let me uh, ease those in with some curve remapping and the way that I found those magic numbers maybe that's worth sharing I was over here and uh, what did I do? This was just yesterday. I'm sure I can remember. I Oh, I remember. Yes, I fired the half closed. Let's find those fully on. That's what those look like. And then I found a value for these that close the eye uh, in an outward position. That's basically what I've got. So this is a 0.6. So instead of using the full eye blink, I'm doing the half eye closed, which kind of pulls it out, and then a little bit of eye blink, a little more than half of the eye blink. And so that was, you know, kind of working how I had imagined it. So magic numbers. And that's exactly what I've plugged into my blueprint here. So the eye blinks are going to max at 0.6 with the, using the remap curve. That's what this is gonna do. It's gonna make that go from whatever value and remap it. That's what this words right, say right here. But here I'm getting some values over here in the event graph. And the reason is I really wanted to control how these values were interpolated with a curve. I want to control how they're coming on and I could not figure out how to do that over here in the anim graph. So I do this over here in the event graph. And I do this like this. I get my live link data which is coming from here. Live link data this is where I'm setting some parameters for gel pitch and roll on the head rotation, which I'm not using currently. And then I get the property value for my eye blink. And I have a curve asset here that has this kind of shape. And it remaps, it's basically remapping the values that are coming from my eye blink and storing them in a new um, variable that I'm using in the anim graph. So I, I basically wanted to control how that, um, what do you call it, that corrective shape is, is coming on. So that's what that is. Here's my pose asset with all of my bone related poses. Double click here, this is what I'm using currently. Uh, I tried adding a few things to this as I was doing it. Uh, but down here I added, when I moved my brows, a small amount of ear motion, which I thought might give a little bit of life. It's um, maybe too subtle, so it doesn't really come through very much. Uh, and those are all my poses in there. There's some head stuff that I can turn on if I want, and that's all I've got. So this is my animation blueprint. So now adding faces, to existing motion is where I'm at, right? This is the, the thing that I need to do next. So I have it, I set up. So I'm gonna stop that video there because the rest of that video was uh, two weeks ago, me stumbling around trying to figure out how I'm gonna get the face added to the body motion. And I learned a lot through that stumbling around and I'm gonna share with you some of that stuff, some of what I figured out. So here's that setup that I was about to show. Uh, and the method that I found to get these recordings working uh, looks like this. Let me dump this. I had set up an iPhone to record here, uh, like you see in so many other videos. I don't need to show you how to do that. But you connect your iPhone uh, to your computer and it just shows up right here. And then you set it as a source to record. And for my purposes, I recorded right into this take. So I have my setup, setup take here, here, which I loaded just like this. And in this thing, I have a wand appy spawned over here. And I worked out, I wasn't exactly sure whether I should be using custom mode which forces this animation to play, or whether I should be trying to work out the blueprint mode. Uh, at some point I got bogged down trying to figure out how to use slots to get my faces into slots and my bodies into another slot and, uh, and that kind of stymied me for a little while and I wasn't seeing my body motion. And in fact, I think on this very first take, 
I set it to force custom mode, recorded my motion, and maybe didn't even have the body motion when I did my recording. I'm not sure, but regardless, I was kind of stepped up for a little while. Eventually I got my face recorded and eventually uh, it looks like this. So you record your motion uh, and then you get a, and then when you go to look at the last reviewed take, what you see is um, a sub scene. Looks something like this. So this was, this would stick like that. And so I recorded it, tried to play it back. It's not seeing face and the reason it was confounding me for quite a while and I, I think it's I'm not even certain I know the reason but I think it's because I'm using custom mode and in order for the iPhone to turn these back into face I need my blueprint I just needs to be in blueprint mode because it needs to run in through the, the live link and here it says body slot which is working against me this should say default or none default so let's leave that on default and let's uh, make sure that this is going to go through the blueprint and be pointed at the right blueprint and now I should see the face and the body motion at the same time. Play it and I do. I could see the eyes moving and a little bit of mouth motion. So we'll stop there. Uh, so this is still using the iPhone and you can see here if I look at live link it's spawning a live link thing and, and playing this as though it's coming in through uh, an active live link. And the important thing to note about that is when you're doing this and also planning to go out of this and then record another take you're gonna have both of those you're gonna have a live one and you're gonna have a sequencer one and you need to make sure the right one is active because you could be rolling while the sequencer reading uh, live link connection is still toggled as the active one and you, you won't get any recording. So this, is, uh, this, this caught me up a couple times. Uh, which, which, was, which is fine, that'll work too, but I wasn't really sure it was gonna work reliably and as mentioned, I was kind of stuffed up. So the, the workaround for my very first post was I baked this motion. I actually muted this track by making it not active. I right clicked on here and did bake animation sequence and then I got an animation sequence here that is this one. So this is only uh, face no body motion and I set this to additive animation type and then I just loaded this as another piece of motion in my sequence. Remove this one and had two pieces of motion active at the same time and that seemed to work well enough. This is what that looked like. So you can see the eyes moving there a little bit. So some of the other issues I had were around the tail which is coming through a um, a post process blueprint and a rigid body node so it's dynamically evaluating this tail motion based on the velocities coming in so it's solving all the time now this works great when you play it down here in uh, interactive session in in the editor but when I was running this through the the uh, movie render queue the tail sometimes was freaking out so I found the most reliable way to get these uh, these motions into a sequence and rendered effectively was to bake the whole thing into a single piece of animation. Once I had things working well enough, I just did that same process and I baked the face from Live Link and the tail from the Dynamics into a new piece of motion that has body, face, and tail, and then I popped that in a render sequence. So I just replaced all my stuff with, a, with, a, with that one motion. And that worked really well. And that's how I made the other posts. So I think that's a great place to stop. I'm going to encourage you all to come to TikTok and like and subscribe and give me some forwards and share with your friends and get some energy, help me get some energy around this and while I keep working things out, making some more posts and hopefully it all gets a little bit easier. Thanks again for joining me on this journey. I really appreciate it. 
I hope to see you all in the next video. Thanks again.